Hi everyone and welcome to my new video where we are setting up my bullet journal for April. I know this video is coming very late but I hope you will still enjoy it and maybe find some inspiration or new ideas for your own journal. I wanted to keep my setup very simple this time because I didn't have a lot of time to set it up. So I went for this bunny theme with lavenders. I looked up some reference photos for the bunny from Unsplash to get the proportions right and that helped a lot with the process. I always start off with a pencil sketch which you will actually see on my weekly spreads later in this video, so stay tuned for that. Sketching makes the drawing process a lot easier and that way I can make sure that the illustration is in the center of the page. First I was thinking of drawing a flower wreath around the bunny but I felt like the April header wouldn't have had a place for it so I just decided to draw some lavenders instead. Lavenders are super easy to draw because they just have these tiny little petals and you don't have to be very precise when you are drawing them. If the bunny feels too difficult, you could easily draw just the flowers or combine them with other flowers as well. When I was drawing the outlines, I again went for this more uneven line style to get a bit more whimsical look and I think it also made the bunny look a bit more organic. For the coloring I used just water-based markers this time because then the coloring process would be a bit quicker. For the bunny I just used some light grey to add shadows and went over the darker areas a couple times to add more dimension. I think this coloring style works really well with the bunnies because they are often very light so coloring them completely would make them look a bit more flat I guess. I also added some pink on the cheeks and ears of the bunny to make it look a bit cuter. I feel like I should have added something to the bunny still because it looks a bit boring I guess. Maybe a bow on the neck would have made me like it more, but it looks just fine now as well. For the lavenders I used a light purple shade first and added shadows on top with a darker pink. This way the petals would have a bit more dimension and I really like how the colors ended up looking together. For the leaves I decided to use this warm green color because I felt like the other green shades I had looked a bit too blue toned and I guess this shade gives more of a vintage vibe. I also went over the edges of the leaves a couple times to add shadows and after that I started adding some highlights in the lavenders. I did this because I didn't leave any white spots in the petals and leaves when I was coloring them and I wanted to have a bit more contrast, especially in the petals. By the way, if you are interested about the supplies that I used, definitely check out the description box as I always write which Tombow shade I used, for example. I always struggle with choosing which Tombow colors I should buy because I often have to order them online, as we don't have any in the stores near me, so I could test the colors beforehand. I'm looking forward to traveling to Berlin again, as there is this huge stationery shop where I always go to, and they have a great selection of different colors. Anyway, my cover page is now done, so next I started making my quote page. The quote I chose this time goes like this. Believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable. I've never been the most confident person and because I'm kind of in the crossroads at the moment with my career, I felt like I really needed this quote to remind me that I have to believe in myself. For the decorations I just drew one lavender on the side and I also realized that the quote isn't in the center of the page when I was getting it, but I was too lazy to fix it. <laughs> This cover spread was very quick to set up and I think this whole setup took just little over 3 hours to make which definitely wasn't bad at all as my setups usually take at least an hour longer. <laughs> anyway, for my monthly spread I decided to go back to my one page calendar because I finished my training program so I don't need as big of a calendar anymore. I also decided to use this light purple shade for the calendar but got a bit scared because it looked super bright at first, <laughs> but I think it worked out in the end. By the way, the reason why I have been a bit late with my video schedule lately 
is the training program I took, but now that it's over, I hope I can get back to my regular schedule. I've also experienced some art blocks, which can make figuring out a new theme quite difficult, but hopefully I will manage those better as well in the future. I have been doing some other creative things though, like knitting, and I just started making my first ever cardigan. I also made some socks, which didn't end up matching because of the yarn, but that's fine, and at least they are the same size. <laughs> I don't have many plans for this month, but I'm traveling to Tampere soon, so I might film a new travel journal video about that. If you would like to see it, leave a train emoji in the comments so I know that you would like to see it. <laughs> anyway, I would love to hear what you've been up to and if you have any plans for April, so let me know in the comments as well. I again kept this spread quite simple and added just one little lavender for the decorations. On the right side I made a weekly planning section, just because I thought it might be helpful if I need more space for planning how I spend my time. I don't like monthly to-do lists, because they seem like a never-ending task list that just gets me anxious about completing it before I even start. <laughs> so I like to make weekly task lists instead, as it doesn't seem as overwhelming. For the decorations, I just decided to use this light purple tissue paper, I guess. I don't know what it's called in English, but in Finnish it would be called silk paper, because it's very thin, and it's also very cheap and easy to find in the book and craft stores. I got this from a package Pikku Paperi gifted to me last year, and saved it because I thought it might be useful, and now I finally had the perfect place to use it. The two stickers I use are also from Pikku Paperi. Anyway, next we are setting up my trackers and I started off by making my happy tracker. I once again used this grid paper I had because I just love it and don't know how to make a happy tracker without it anymore. I again used it for every other box and used a light pink Tombow Dwarf Rust Pen to create Ingham patterns for the rest of the boxes. I've done a happy tracker like this many times, so I hope you aren't tired of seeing that. Maybe I should try a different color for the Gingham better next time. Like always, I used my Tombow Fudenoska pen for all the headers, as that's my favorite calligraphy pen, and I like how the black headers give a bit more contrast, as I usually use quite light colors for the boxes and stuff. To save my fine liners a bit, I used this Zebra Sarasa gel pen to write out the habits I'm going to track. I like to use this in cases when I haven't sketched out what I'm going to write, as this gel pen is much as when you use an eraser. Instead of a mood tracker, I again made a steps and sleep tracker, even though the one from Mats is still only half filled. <laughs> I just don't know what else I could have added in here, so if you have any ideas or suggestions, let me know in the comments. For the decorations, I just drew a lavender on both sides of the steps and sleep tracker to keep things simple. I could have used stickers as well, but sadly didn't have that many flower stickers left, so I guess I have to order some new ones soon. I'm really excited that spring is slowly coming here in Finland as well. We still have a lot of snow, but the days are getting longer and we have more sunlight, which feels so nice. Anyway, let's finally move on to my weekly spreads, and this time I decided to try out something completely different. I made my sister a bullet journal for last year, and tried a waterfall dot door in one of the monthly setups, and ever since then I've been wanting to try that out on my own journal as well. I cut the dot doors in a way that each dot door was two dots wider than the previous one, if that makes sense. I added some washi tapes on each side of the dot doors and used some spring colors that suited the color scheme of this setup. I really like how this waterfall dot door turned out, and I don't know yet how I will set up the rest of the weekly spreads, but I think it will be a fun challenge as I can try out some new layouts. For the first weekly spread, I went for this basic vertical layout that always works well with this type of dot store. 
choosing the color for the boxes was difficult so but i ended up with this light brown color because the washi tails were quite colorful and i thought this would balance them out nicely for writing out the days of the week i again used my zebra sarasa gel pen and i wrote them with this cursive font so they would stand out a bit more it was actually already Wednesday when I filmed this, so I could have easily skipped this weekly spread, but I thought I might need it for planning out my weekend, and it's always nice to have some space for journaling, just in case. After the weekly layout and the waterfall dot stories were done, I moved on to decorating the page on the left. I saved it for last because I thought it would be easier to choose the color palette after I had picked out the other colors, because it's always easier to match the color scheme with the markers that I have instead of washi tape, as I do have a lot more markers than washi tapes. <laughs> anyway, here you can see how I usually sketch my doodles. I always start off by sketching the basic shapes and then I start to create a bit more detailed outlines. This way the proportions will be more accurate as you will create a bigger picture first. If you start sketching the face and make it very detailed before you start sketching the body, it can be difficult to make the face and body match together. I also erase a lot to get the shape I want, as it's nearly impossible to make perfect ears at the first try for example, at least for me. <laughs> After I was happy with the sketch, I started drawing the outlines and that was definitely the easiest part of the process as I just had to follow the sketch. I used the same uneven line style as before to keep this theme cohesive and I feel like it also makes the bunny look more fluffy. This time I also added a bow on the bunny's neck because I felt like the previous bunny looked too simple and I think it definitely was the right choice. Oh and by the way, I was again looking at a reference photo of a real bunny when I was sketching this and it helped a lot. I just made the ears a bit different because I thought they looked cuter when the one ear was a bit floppy, I guess. I loved drawing these bunnies and I would have definitely added more of them in my setup if I had more time on my hands. Drawing animals is always really fun and I love looking at them in my bullet journal. Anyway, I was a bit worried that the light pink on the bunny's cheek would look too pale, so I decided to use the same light purple shade for it as I used for the lavender. I don't know yet how I feel about this choice because it ended up looking quite bright, and maybe a colored pencil would have worked a bit better, but oh well. <laughs> Finally, I just added some golden sparkles near the lavender for finishing touches. Now it's time for the final flip through. I like how the setup turned out even though it's really simple. I actually didn't even test the colors or make sketches beforehand like I usually do before I start making my actual theme, but luckily it turned out just fine still. I would love to hear what you think of this theme and remember to leave a like and also a star emoji in the comments if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next one. Bye bye!